Shalom, I'm John Carney Roth, and welcome to another episode of Something to Think About. You know, before putting this message together, Yahweh had spoken to me earlier in the week about what this message would be, and he gave me the title, In Vain, Do You Worship Me? And it's posed as a question. What are you willing to give up? That's today's discussion about something to think about. You need to think about that. I don't think many people really do stop to think about, am I worshiping the Messiah in vain? We automatically assume that when we come to the faith, that we are worshiping him in spirit and truth. But are we? And that's uh, the discussion for today that I want you to think about. I want you to contemplate. I want you to pray on it. I want you to meditate on it. And I'm going to give you some scriptures um, to back up what I'm saying. So, is it possible you're worshiping the Messiah in vain? This is the question that we should all be asking ourselves, especially since if we're going through life and we're finding that we're not getting the answers to the things that are going on in our life, we're not progressing, we're not growing uh, in grace and truth, then it might be time for us to pause and stop and think to ourselves, perhaps maybe I'm not worshiping him in spirit and truth, and he's not really hearing what I'm saying to him. And so it might be time for reevaluations. You know, the Jews in Yahshua's day thought that they were worshiping Yahweh in spirit and truth. And yet in Matthew chapter 15, uh, verse 8, he addresses them. And they didn't understand what he was really saying to them. What he said in Matthew 15, 8, he says, This people draws near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips as pouring out water, but their heart is far as a great distance from me. And in verse 9, he says, And in vain and an unsuccessful to no purpose search, they worship with reverence of me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. Friends, have we possibly set up our own doctrines that have nullified the commandments of Yahweh that we may establish our own commandments and our own form of worship of the Messiah to the point that he actually doesn't even hear us? He's telling the Jews that you're trying to worship me, the Messiah, the one you're praying to up there. I'm the one that was up there and came down to you and I'm here now and I'm telling you that in generations past and in generations future, you worship me in vain. They didn't understand that. They didn't get it. They were so wrapped up in their dogma and traditions of men that they couldn't understand that they were not actually worshiping and he's not honoring them and he's not listening to what they're, they're, re, they're requesting from him. So you may be saying, well, okay, well, uh, where does this come from? Well, actually, he's repeating uh, a scripture that was written in, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 29. He's referring back, he's repeating the same thing that Isaiah said. And so in Isaiah 29, 13, it says, Therefore Yahweh said, Inasmuch as this people draw near to worship with their mouths and honor and an honor of glorious things of me with their lips, but they have removed their hearts where their feelings reside far from me at a great distance. And their fear of moral reverence towards me is taught as a pricking goad by the commandments of men. So this is what Yahshua was trying to say to the Jews. The same thing that they were doing back there with Isaiah is the same thing you guys are doing here today. And so thus today, in this modern age in which we live, it's no different, whether it's Judaism, Islam, Christianity, and so forth, and other religions, we are worshiping him in vain. And what I'm asking you is to be honest with yourself and take a look at whether or not you are falling into the same category. And I think if you're willing to be honest with yourself and really ask an empowering question, you will get an empowering answering. Now, the answer you're going to wind up with is going to be very sobering. I had to deal with an individual this week who found out that they're coming up short and they're seeking answers, which is a good thing. If you are finding that you're coming up short, then this is a good thing because now it's going to lead you to some answers. But the question is going to be is, like I said from the beginning, what are you willing to give up? What are you willing to give up? And most people that I come into contact with do not want to give up anything. They want to continue on doing what they've been doing all along 
and they don't want to make the kind of sacrifices that Yahweh requires of us if we want to worship Him in the way that He says He wants us to worship them. And it's not about how we want to do it. It's not like the old Frank Sinatra song, I did it my way, you know. Are you doing it your way or are you doing it his way? And in order to find out how, you know, if you're married, this will come close to home. If you're married, your wife or your husband, if you were to ask them, were you honoring them in a way that is pleasing to them? Chances are they may start coming out with a list saying, you know, you do this, you do this, you do that, and I'm not happy with these things. And when you do those things, you're not honoring me and I don't feel loved. Well, Yahweh has his own ways of saying, I have a particular way that I want you to react and behave towards me. And so if you'll seek me out with your whole heart, mind, and soul, and with strength, and learn what those ways are, then I will begin to bless you. So let's move on here. Um, and what I want to say is one of the big ones, one of the big ones is in Christianity, they want to worship Yahweh on Sunday. But I want to ask you a question. I really want to ask you a question. When the millennium comes, will you still be worshiping the Messiah on Sunday if you happen to come into the millennial period. Now, I don't think many people really stop to ask themselves the questions uh, such as that. But I really want to ask you, will you be worshiping on Sunday? And I'm going to tell you, you won't be worshiping on a weekly Sunday. You're going to be worshiping on the Sabbath. You see, brethren, all this comes down to the commandments. If you want to really worship Yahweh, Yahshua says, to honor with the great and first commandment. The, that's the Shema. The Shema is the first four commandments of the ten. But today we have religions that don't want to have nothing to do with those first four commandments. But if you want to worship Him in spirit and truth, and if you really want to have a true relationship with Him, then you're going to have to honor the commandments. So again, the question is, is Sunday going to be the day of worship during the millennium? And I'm telling you, it will not. And we have in Scripture to be able to tell us this, because the Sabbath is a day that marks His people. Now, if you're refusing to keep the Sabbath, you have a different mark for a different kind of Messiah. And I know that may sound harsh, and that's not my intent to be harsh. My intention is to try to get you to stop and think about what you're doing and where it's leading you to. And so, in Isaiah 66, we have a scripture that pinpoints this exact time and how he says things are going to be. Now, we can either get in alignment with that, or we can try to continue on in our own way, and there are consequences that will come a result of that during the millennial period if we choose not to be obedient and worship him in the way that he specifies. So, in Isaiah 66, it says, in verse 23, and it shall come to pass. Now, this is after Messiah sits on his throne. He's destroyed Satan and the demons, and he's destroyed all the governments, and now he's taking over. And the law, the commandments, is going to go out from Zion to the four corners of the earth. Brethren, sooner or later, we're all going to have to get in alignment with this. You might as well start now. You might as well start now. And it shall come to pass and exist as a beacon. And a beacon is like a light that flashes, that alerts everyone, sort of like a lighthouse. That one from one new moon that rebuilds and repairs to another, from one Sabbath to another, all flesh. Brethren, listen to what I'm saying in this verse. All flesh shall come to worship by prostrating in homage before me, says Yahweh, the self-existent one. Now, what are you going to do with that? What are you going to do with it? This is a millennial prophecy that has not yet taken place. And what he's saying is, the Sabbath is going to be the day that everybody comes to worship him. Those are his terms. And at that point, we can't establish our own terms the way we're doing it today. So the question is, if it started off as a Sabbath that marks his people, that the world will know that they are his people. And in the interim, we've switched the Sabbath to Sunday. 
and we've tried to say that that's the true day of worship, which has no biblical precedence whatsoever. But in the millennium, when he takes back charge over the earth again, because it's no longer the day of man running things the way it has been for the last 6,000 years, he's going to tell us through these scriptures, and there are many others, that the Sabbath is going to be the day that you're going to come and worship. And in other places it says, if you don't, there's going to be a punishment that will come upon us. Brethren, it makes no sense why we keep in Sunday. None. There's no biblical precedence whatsoever. Messiah wasn't resurrected on, on the uh, first day of the week on Sunday. He was resurrected on the Sabbath. But my, I want to get back again to what I've been saying from the beginning. What is it you're willing to give up? Are you willing to give up your Sunday and, and start keeping the Sabbath? Are you willing to give up your Christmas and Easter? These are traditions of men that have taken you away from the commandments of Yahweh. So what I want to say now, kind of in conclusion, is this. There is a identifying marker for the bride of Messiah in the end times that she will be taken away. And it's very important that we make this distinction about what this woman will be doing. And it ain't what you see here today in the world that we're living in. But this woman is going to have a radical change. Question is, are you going to be part of that woman or not? Or are you going to hold on to the things that you don't want to give up and worship him in spirit and truth? And so let me read in Revelation chapter 12, verse 17, to see the distinction. There's two distinctions that were given. And the dragon, which is an extraordinary and fascinating sight, was enraged and provoked to the point of exasperation with the woman, who is a wife coming into being. It's a process. And he went, departing, following from behind to make war or for a single or series of encounters with the rest of the remaining ones left behind of her offspring, who were the seed sown, scattered, and kept for the planting who keep a watch to guard from loss or injury like a fortress or full of military line apparatus, the commandments of Torah. This is what's in the book of Revelation in chapter 12, verse 17. And then the supreme divinity or uh, deity and have the testimony as a judicial witness of Yahshua the Messiah. And the testimony is the spirit of prophecy. So if you have the spirit of prophecy and you keep the commandments of Yahweh, you are this woman. But if you're going to hold on to Sunday and disregard the commandments of Yahweh, you're not going to be part of this woman. And you're going to stay behind. And eventually the beast system is going to put so much pressure on you that if you refuse to conform to Yahweh's commandments, then you're going to be keeping the beast commandments. That's it, brethren. There is no middle ground of safety where you can decide I'll decide later between the two systems at the end this is what it's telling us this is who this woman is these are identifying markers of who this woman is the question is whether or not you're going to choose to be a part of that woman or not and so that's the decision for you to make today do you have the faith and the strength to give up your traditions to worship him in spirit and truth that's the question I'm asking what are you willing to let go in your life to show him that you are not worshiping him in vain? That it comes to nothing? And are you going to do it your way or his way? That's the question today, uh, friends. These are compelling questions that we should all be asking ourselves, especially as this world is spiraling out of control and things are becoming more and more uncertain all the time. So that is something to think about. Think about what I have said today. Meditate on it. Be honest with yourself. Stop deluding yourself. Really ask yourself these questions with the idea that you really want to have a solid answer. I've already laid it out for you today. If this doesn't convince you, then I feel really sorry for you. But go before the throne and ask him to convince you, to show you that this is the way. That's something to think about. Till the next time, shalom.